Hey guys, when you read the Old Testament, you will find out many times that the leaders in Israel, the patriarchs, erected certain altars to our Lord. And it was a reminder to them of something great that God had done at a certain period of time, and also to remind future generations. But I think that's the same way with a lot of Christians and certain passages of Scripture, certain verses of Scripture that just stands out to us. We come to those passages, those certain verses, and it reminds us of something great that the Lord did in our lives. How the Lord used those verses, those passages, to minister to us, to speak to us. Maybe it was a time of um, trial and testing, maybe a time of tribulation, maybe a time of um, illness. But the Lord used those scriptures to, um, to minister to us and to speak to us. And that's what I'd like to do throughout this whole summer. I'd like to speak to certain friends of mine to ask them about those portions of scripture that mean something special to them. Those uh, scriptures that are like landmarks, that when they come to those, um, those verses of scripture, it just reminds them of something in their lives, something that the Lord um, did in, the, in their past, and um, something great that the Lord did and um, that they will always remember. And so I'd like to speak to several of my friends throughout the whole summer. And um, first up is my dear friend Kaim, the abalone kid. Hey. Brother Mark, <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here, man? <laughs> oh, man. Don't you love it? We're by God's ocean. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Father. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity to be together again. Absolutely. This is our what, third or fourth time? This is our third time. Third time together, yeah. But never enough. Yeah. <laughs> So, Kaim, let's talk about your life verse, man. Um, what life uh, verse, what verse in the Bible has really spoken to you, and why? You remember, Mark, when we first got together, we used to have the lunches, and I told you about my street ministry. Well, I go back to those years that I spent on the street in L.A., up and down the coast as well, but mainly Los Angeles. And I was doing that homeless ministry, and I was living in my van, and I spent a, a total of approximately 2,000 days on the street, full-time. Slept in the van at night, woke up 6 in the morning, got out on the street. And I used to read my Bible every day, and one verse, section of, of Scripture, of course so much is so wonderful, but one verse really stuck with me. And that was John 14, verses 1 to 3, and verse 6, I believe. Amen. In my father's house, don't let your heart be troubled, Jesus said. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, there you will also be. Amen. Amen. And then I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I loved that scripture. I loved it when I was studying Bible in my apartment in Mendocino before he put me on the road, and I loved it on the street. And every day I would go to John and read that wonderful verse. Finally. It's stuck in my unintelligent mind, so I can repeat it to you now many years later. It took a long time for the Lord to teach me. But, you know, don't let your heart be troubled, Jesus said. What did he mean? Well, in chapter 13 of John, he had just finished telling his disciples that he was going to leave them. That he had more work that was unfulfilled that would cause him to have to leave them. And they didn't understand and they were troubled. In fact, Peter was told by Jesus that he too would run into sin, that the devil would tempt him, and that he would deny the Lord three times, which he did. But Jesus said to them, as he says to all of us who need forgiveness daily, who need to come to him daily as our high priest up yonder, and ask for the forgiveness of our sins and specify them. And if we don't know any off the top of our head, remember this. That which is done without faith is sin. Mm -hmm. So we always have something to ask the Lord 
to forgive us for, not for salvation, because that's a completed work. He said, it's finished, when he completed his work. It's for fellowship with mm. our Father, mm. that we need that our high priest up yonder who's Jesus, and we need to come to him daily, sometimes twice a day. I do it in the morning when I get up, and I do it at night when I go to sleep, and my wife and I do it together. Father, forgive me. And if I necessary, I recite the sins, and I get them off. And Jesus' blood cleans them all. Mm. He's cleaned it for eternity, but I need to restore my fellowship if I'm in sin. That's very important for us to know. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. He's telling them, don't be troubled. Be comforted, because I'm going to my Father's house. In my Father's house are many mansions. Jesus was the creator of the universes. He knew his Father's house was enormous. And in his Father's house, we have a place. Mm. And there are galaxies and galaxies and galaxies, so no problem. Nice to think how wonderful it's going to be when I can be up there. Maybe he'll assign me to a planet. <laughs> I don't know, you know, wherever it is, I'll be happy. But And I'm the least of the brethren, but my goodness gracious, there's stars and galaxies and planets and the Earth. We'll be working on the Earth as well, but... We have a, a home up in heaven, and eventually Jesus is going to finish the New Jerusalem, and we are going to be living there in the New Jerusalem that he's prepared for his church, his bride, us. And that's going to be a special place eventually. It's going to come down and hover over a recreated, renewed earth. And God's glory is going to be the light of the entire galaxy that we are in without a sun and a moon necessary. That's how glorious it's going to be. Amen. Jesus said, if it were not so, I would have told you. He's telling us, it is, and I'm going. I have to go. This is temporary down here. It's temporary for you. And the work you're supposed to do here is give me the glory. Preach the gospel. Get another soul into the kingdom. That's what I want of you. And that's what we have to do. And he says further in John, if it wasn't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, he said. Meaning, he's up there. He's going to call us up. And we're going to go up to, re to be with him where he is. And then he says, and so shall you always be. So he's losing none of us. Amen. Eternity is a, is a gift of salvation that Jesus has paid for. And let none of you have any doubts. Amen. Salvation is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And he also said that, as you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes in the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way for us to be saved. He's the only ticket home. All right. Amen. Amen. Any, um, any last words, Kaim? Got about one minute. May the Lord richly bless all of you who watch this video. And I want to say this. We have a revival show going on theabalonekid.com. And Mark, proclaim his word is part of it. Crystal Lewis and David Wilkerson and G.E. Patterson and Keith Green and so many wonderful singles, Michael W. Smith. So I want you to come to the website and tune into that gospel revival and free download my MP3s, which cost you nothing except a few minutes to do the work. Thank you very much. Kaim, God bless you, brother. You Thank are a blessing to the body of Christ. Thank you, Mark. All right, man. You take care, huh? Okay. All nice right. to see you. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> All right.